Hello and welcome. I'm Fernando, a GP in the UK. Today, we will go through a real-life case of a young woman with hypertension. We will focus on the NICE guidance, addressing issues relevant to primary care only. So let's jump into it. Maria is a 31-year-old woman of mixed Afro-Caribbean family origin. She has hypertension and because of a young age, she has been fully investigated for secondary courses and she has none, so her diagnosis is essential hypertension. Her medication is amlodipine, 10 mg daily, and she is otherwise fit and healthy. Her blood pressure is 155 over 92. What should we do? She is on step 1 treatment with one drug, in this case, the maximum dose of amlodipine, a calcium channel blocker which is the preferred choice for people who do not have diabetes and who are of Afro-Caribbean background. Now it says that if the blood pressure is not controlled with a calcium channel blocker alone, we have to start step 2 treatment with two drugs, adding either an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, and if the person is of Afro-Caribbean background, an ARB should be used in preference to an ACE inhibitor, or alternatively, we can prescribe a thyroid like diuretic. So our instinct will probably tell us to start an ARB, something like, for example, Lusartan 25mg daily, and to treat it up according to response. This seems to be fairly straightforward so far. But then she tells you, Doctor, I'm actively trying to get pregnant. Is that going to be okay? And obviously, it will not be okay. In fact, we should have thought about it even before she mentioned it, because being a woman of childbearing age, it is a possibility that we must always bear in mind. And this is where we need to look at the NICE guideline, Hypertension in Pregnancy, Diagnosis and Management, which not only covers hypertension during pregnancy, but also includes advice for women with hypertension who wish to conceive. We know that ACE inhibitors and ARBs have an increased risk of congenital abnormalities if taken during pregnancy, and NICE recommends an alternative if the woman is planning to get pregnant. There's also an MHRA drug safety advice, which states that the use of ACE inhibitors and ARBs in women who are planning pregnancy should be avoided unless absolutely necessary, in which case the potential risks and benefits should be discussed. So, if a woman taking an ACE inhibitor or an ARB becomes pregnant, it should be stopped, preferably within two working days, and we should offer an alternative. Equally, we should advise women taking thyroside or thyroside like diuretics that there may be an increased risk of congenital abnormalities, and we should also offer an alternative. We should explain to the patient that antihypertensive treatments, other than ACE inhibitors, ARBs, Thyroside or thyroside like diuretics have not shown an increased risk of congenital malformation, although the evidence is limited. So, how should we treat her? NICE recommends offering referral to a specialist in hypertensive disorders of pregnancy to discuss the risks and benefits of treatment, and perhaps we should do just that. Should we be doing something else in the meantime? Well, we could if we were worried. But this is where, apart from the usual lifestyle advice, NICE does not give specific drug advice for this group of patients. It does say, however, that for women who are pregnant and who have chronic hypertension, we should consider labetalol first. Then we will consider nifedipine if labetalol is not suitable. But we will bear in mind that some brands of nifedipine were specifically contraindicated in pregnancy by the manufacturer. So we will check the specific product characteristics for each preparation of nifedipine. And lastly, methyl dopa, if both labetalol and nifedipine are not suitable. The patient is already taking amlodipine as a calcium channel blocker, so we will not be considering nifedipine. If I wanted to add a second agent, I would probably recommend starting labetalol, for example 100 mg twice daily, while waiting to see the specialist. In summary, we will refer her to secondary care for expert advice and we may consider adding labetalol in the meantime if we're worried. Please note that this is the advice for chronic hypertension in pregnancy, that is, women with hypertension who become pregnant. It is different from gestational hypertension, that is, hypertension that develops during pregnancy, 
which has different recommendations. Gestational hypertension, including preeclampsia, should be assessed and managed in secondary care. We have come to the end of this episode. Remember that this is not medical advice, and it is only my summary and my interpretation of the guidelines. You must always use your clinical judgment. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.